With that, I'd like to begin the town meeting in motion for article number one. Move that the town transfer from free cash $38,288 for police salaries in fiscal year 2014. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. The select board recommends this article 400 and the finance uh, committee recommends unanimously. Uh, Selectman Chungalo, please speak to the article. For the fiscal year that ended on June 30th, a shortfall in the police department salary occurred. This amount, $38,288, needs to be resolved before we can set the tax rate for the current fiscal year. The shortfall resulted from overtime costs which occurred during the time of transition and loss for the department. Funding is from free cash and there is no impact on taxes. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your card. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 2. Move that the town amend fiscal year 2015 budget by amending the vote on Article 8 of the warrant of the annual town meeting held May 1st, 2014 by amending the following line items. Wastewater debt and interest from zero to $24,895. Wastewater contingent reserve from zero to $10,000. Water contingency reserve from zero to $10,000. Long-term debt principal $690,223 to $713,566. Long-term debt and interest from $113,383 to $112,548. OPEB from zero to $164,888. The sum totals are from $14,993,176 to $15,225,467. And further, move that the town amend the appropriation as follows. Raise and appropriate $12,908,760. Appropriate from sewer reserves $785,043 and transfer from the sewer reserves $113,247 and appropriate from water receipts $1,142,210 transfer from the water reserve $79,154 and transfer $61,378 of free cash and an additional $133,231 of free cash certified as of July 1st, 2013. Take from the MSBA fund reserve $2,444 and take for the maintenance and operation of the town fiscal year 2015 as recommended by the finance committee included debt and interest. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Motion and seconded. The select board recommends 401 abstention and the finance committee recommends unanimously. David Nixon, could you please speak to the article? Good evening. Uh, if, you, if you haven't done it already, please refer to the handout, not the warrant, because the numbers are different from the handout to the warrant. If there's any confusion over that, we can talk a little bit about that. This is a planned adjustment on the annual town meeting budget that was passed back in May. Uh, at that time, we knew that we had a large borrowing coming up that we would have to be making several adjustments to our debt and interest payments. In addition, we uh, deferred our uh, appropriation on the OPEB account pending the outcome of what free cash would be certified uh, come July 1st. So we're coming back to you tonight in order to make the adjustments. Uh, the first adjustments have to do with borrowing about $3.5 million 
of voter approved projects. This includes the Hopkins School roof, the land purchase, the rescue pumper, the radio equipment, uh, and I'll go on if you wish, but uh, these are things that have already been received voter approval for borrowing. Um, so we bundled that all together for $3.5 million borrowing. We, we prepared numbers that were uh, estimates based upon the conservative analysis uh, as, as to what we thought the bond sale would be when the warrant was posted. Bond sale was on Monday at noon and we received a very favorable uh, result. And so we're able to come to you tonight and reduce the appropriation that we're asking for. Um, the reduction overall, we were originally asking for $424,000 and change, and now the, we're asking for $232,000 and change. So a little bit, a little bit more than, a uh, little less than a half uh, reduction. <coughs> the timing of the debt is important. We, uh, the, the selectmen felt it was very important for uh, us to have a stable tax rate. We had major debt coming off for the elementary school and the public safety complex. The last debt payments were made already. So debt was going, uh, the tax rate was going to decrease by about 61 cents. And then with this new borrowing, it was important to the select board that there would be an evening out of the tax rate. So the results of the bid sale is an additional 61 cents. So 61 cents came off, 61 cents came back on, so it's an even tax impact, so there wouldn't be any wild swings as we go through this particular borrowing. Selectman gave us that task and we're able to say tonight that we achieved it penny for penny. So um, we asked for support on this article in order so that we could uh, uh, pay off the debt and keep the tax rate stable and uh, complete our work on the FY15 budget. Edwin Matuska, 116 Stockbridge Street. What does OPEB stand for? OPEB or OPEB is, stands for Other Post Employment Benefits, and it's a liability that was identified back in 2008. This is a national liability. All cities and towns are, have to account for their post and other post employment benefits. So retirees receive a number of benefits. The principal one would be the pension. And so there are other uh, benefits that also accrue, such as health insurance, life insurance, and for some towns, not this town, dental insurance. And so the OPB, OPEB refers to all the benefits that are accruing to our retirees in the future, uh, other than pension. Our, our OPEB liability, unfunded liability, stands at $7.5 million, and we are uh, pursuing an aggressive uh, strategy, six-point strategy, to address that unfunded liability. John Michkowski, what do you have now in that OPEB account? And you say the, the goal is for projected at how many years away that you need $7 million, or is it as of today? Right now we're on a, well, to answer your question directly, the last time I checked the OPEB account, we had $123,567, and that's, that number is about a month old at this point. Uh, we are pursuing a strategy which includes at least one step of increasing our commitment to OPEB by 10% of what our, our our actuarials tell us that we should be putting away every year that would not only keep pace with our liability but also reduce it over a period of time. So that that annual contribution is $800,000 a year. Not going to happen. We don't have that kind of financial capacity to be able to ramp up an $800,000 annual commitment to that liability. So instead we're pursuing a strategy where we increase by 10% each year our contribution towards that uh, $800,000. If we can keep pace, we can hit that number in 10 years' time. Within a few years, there's going to be more retirees retiring, or town employees retiring. 
how are you going to meet that goal if you're only putting 10% in there? Okay, so a 10% escalator per year. So the first year is 10%, second year is 20%, third year is 30%, fourth year is 50%, fifth year is 100%. We've asked our actuarial to give us an analysis of what, where is the stop the bleeding uh, point, and we think that we're going to hit that point where we're not adding to our future liability in fiscal year 17. So if we can keep pace, we can, we can uh, stop the increase in the liability, unfunded liability in about two years' time, all other things being equal. In five years, will, will you have enough funds to take care of the people that are in line to retire in five years? Um, yes. Uh, one way to think about this is, is that this is a future obligation. So I'm going to take myself as an example. Um, I'm, I'm old enough to retire. I wouldn't be making that much money, so it's not going to happen. But uh, uh, let's say that I decide to retire tonight. I'd go to the select board and I'd say, OK, select board, I want you to pay me now for all of my future health care costs until I say that I think I'm going to pass on and don't need it anymore. They'd say, it's crazy. Uh, you don't know if you're going to stay retired, you don't know how long you're going to live, you don't know what kind of plan you're going to have, you don't know if you're going to rob the bank and be ineligible for the uh, benefit anyway. So this is a future obligation. In some ways it's a phantom number, but it's a real liability that we have to pay attention to. This town and state. Um, can this town or any town do what the state of Michigan did to their retirees this year? We're on there, they shut them off completely, said they didn't have a penny coming. Is that possible? If we get so bad, can we as a town do that, like the state of Michigan did to their employees? Retired employees, they took that completely away from them. Um, I don't know that Hadley can do something like that on its own. Um, I think that that would require a substantial amount of work in order to have that kind of power to deny people a benefit that we have promised that, they would, that we would provide for them. There's also state legislation which is pending which would address this in another manner. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think that we could do it for ourselves. Well, the thing of it is, whether you could or couldn't. Ms. West, I'm going to interject. It really doesn't have anything with the article that we have in front of us. I understand that your question and the question that you may have, but it's, it's outside of the scope of what we're actually talking about right here in front of us. And I, I'd like to it, we'll push the meeting along slightly and not talk about outside of the realm of what we're talking about. With all due respect, sir. Any other questions? Mr. West? Mr. Nixon said he'd be happy to make an appointment and speak to you regarding this at any time that's convenient for you, sir. Any further questions? Seeing none, I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously.